Um, please feel free, if you have questions, put them in the chat and then we'll go over questions at the very end of this. Um, hold on. Oops. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead. Actually, I just want to make sure I can like let people in still, even though I'm sharing my screen. Oh, there we go. We still have some people joining. If I'm sharing my screen, can you see like the participation list or no, just the PowerPoint? I can still see the participation list. Okay, okay. Well, I'll just get rid of it. Oh. Or put it low. Okay, I'm just gonna get started. So, like I said, oh gosh, sorry, <laughs> trying to get this started. All right, so welcome everyone. We're gonna today be talking about nutrition recommendations for athletes. So I'm super excited about this because nutrition for performance is super important when it comes to athletics. Um, my name is Gina Fangle. I have my, a little bit about my background is I have a degree in um, dietetics and then nutrition dietetics. And I'm, right now I'm actually up in St. Cloud through the St. Cloud Hospital, finishing up some uh, rotations to become fully a registered dietitian. Um, but I'm still working at the powerhouse. So a little intro about why it's important to talk about nutrition is as young athlete, the young athletes that you guys are, you face a difficult task of balancing the physical and mental demands of training and growing. So you guys are studying in school, you have social commitments, you have sport performance and recovery commitments. Um, all of that requires a lot of energy and food is energy. That's gonna help fuel all those activities that you have to do. And without that food, you might feel like you have a little bit less energy. So that's why it's important. Uh, when challenging yourself to perform your best in sports, school, and personal life, the role of nutrition becomes the key to success, staying healthy, and making progress. So very important part of your sport. So food broken down, we're going to kind of cover this briefly. So all types of food, when you think about every food, they all contain macronutrients and micronutrients. Uh, macronutrients are going to be they're called macronutrients because they supply the most energy for you. So those are your carbs, your proteins, and your fats. Hopefully you guys have heard those terms before. And then micronutrients, on the other hand, are the vitamins and minerals found in foods that are critical for energy, um, immune health, which is really important right now, and then actually your performance. So the more energy you have, the better you're going to perform on the field or whatever, um, wherever you're playing. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into each macronutrient. So first is gonna be carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are really important because they help fuel your muscles, your brain, um, and it's the preferred energy source actually for your muscles and your brain. So the less carbs you have, the less energy you might feel. Eating adequate carbohydrates will ensure enough energy for daily function along with optimal sports performance. Basically, the more active you are, the more carbohydrates you need to fuel your activity and make sure your muscles are getting enough energy for the activity that you are doing. There's simple versus complex carbs. So simple, simple carbs are just, you're just getting your carbohydrates. Maybe it's white rice, maybe it's white bread. For examples, complex carbs though are gonna also contain fiber, your vitamins, your minerals, so um, some examples of that would be like whole grain bread, oatmeal, fruit, vegetables. Um, excellent sources of carbohydrate, well listed there again, fruit, we wanna have at least two times per day is a good goal. Whole grains are things like brown rice, pasta, quinoa, bread, whole grain bread, um, cereals, oatmeal. Just make sure when you buy bread and cereals, or I guess anything, if you're looking at the product, make sure you read the ingredients label 
to see that whole grain is listed on the ingredients label. So if whole grain is not listed, then it's not a whole grain. Um, beans and lentils are good carbohydrate sources. Potatoes are also great. Vegetables, we wanna try to aim for three or more servings a day. Three is a great goal, more can be difficult, but again, those are gonna contain your vitamins and minerals that are gonna give you a lot of energy. And then when you think about eating vegetables, try to think about eating the rainbow. So we want to have a big variety of color on our plate when we're eating vegetables. One, it just makes it look pretty, so it's more enjoyable to eat. And then two, um, the different colors of the fruits or vegetables provide different vitamins and minerals. So you want to get a well-rounded plate of all your vitamins and minerals by getting different color. All right, then macronutrient, uh, the next macronutrient is protein. So I'm sure you guys have all heard of protein as being like an important building block for building muscles, but it also goes into building strong bones, building strong ligaments, skin, and actually um, helps with hormone production, which is important as you're growing. The amount of protein you need also increases with your activity level to a certain extent. So making sure you have a protein source with your each meal and even snacks can be uh, really helpful for performance. We'll go over some examples of that in a little bit. And then uh, enough protein, since it helps with the growth of ligaments, um, it can be really helpful in injury prevention. So a common injury in soccer is ACL tears. So we wanna prevent that. One way to prevent that can be getting adequate protein. Some examples of animal-based protein are chicken, pork, beef, fish, eggs, dairy. And then if you guys have heard of whey protein powder, that is actually animal-based because it's made, it's derived from milk. So if you have a lactose sensitivity or milk sensitivity, you'd probably want to stick away from whey protein powders. Um, but, and you can also get great protein sources through plant-based foods. So if you prefer not to eat animal products, that's totally fine. You can get protein from beans, lentils, whole grain breads, whole grain pastas, vegetables, quinoa, nuts and seeds are a great source of protein. Um, again, with the whole grains, just make sure you read the ingredients list to see that it has whole grain as like one of the main, one of the first ingredients listed. Some other sources of plant-based or non-animal-based protein are gonna to be tofu, seitan, and then tempeh and hemp seeds. And also you can find plant-based protein powders. Usually those are made from um, peas or like brown rice or a combination of different, maybe soy protein um, or a combination of some. All right, the next macronutrient is fat. So we got carbs, protein, now we're gonna cover fat, the three macronutrients. Fat is um, a primary nutrient involved in the development of growth and the efficiency of the brain and nervous system. So basically fats help you think very clearly and they're also really important for energy. They're important for the absorption of some vitamins and minerals. So some of our vitamins and minerals that we consume are called fat soluble, meaning they need to be eaten with fats in order to be absorbed efficiently in the body. So getting whole food um, sources of fat are, is really important. Uh, fats help you think and move efficiently during practice and games. So I always like to give this analogy of your macronutrients are kind of like um, building a fire. So if you have a fire, what is gonna be the thing that helps that fire burn longer. So your logs in the fire is going to be what helps that fire burn longer. And that is that your logs are your fat. And then what are you going to use to like quickly start that fire um, would be like paper or gasoline. That paper or gasoline is going to be your carbohydrates. So usually we get like a quick source of energy from carbs, but we also want to have some fats in our day to help sustain our energy throughout the day. So we're not getting hungry immediately after eating or even like 30 minutes after eating. All right, not all fat is created equal. So you don't necessarily have to remember these terms, but I think it's important because you're gonna hear them throughout your life. 
Mono and polyunsaturated fats are the good fats that we want to have. So basically, fats that come from plants are really healthy, like avocados, olive oil. You've probably seen avocado oil out there these days. Those are healthy. Even like canola oil is a decently good uh, fat. Nuts and seeds are great. Um, fatty fish like salmon is a great heart healthy fat. There's a couple other examples, but the uh, salmon's a big one. Egg yolks are actually very, contain a very healthy uh, amount of fat. So eat the yolks in your eggs, also because they provide more flavor. Um, and then nut butters like almond or cashew. Uh, so there's even like sunflower butter out there, great fat sources. So if you're ever wondering what's a healthy fat source, think plant-based fats first. And then you can, if you can remember eggs and salmon, that's a good one too. And then we want to try to avoid saturated and trans fats as much as we can. So saturated fats are going to be fats that are solid at room temperature, like butter, um, also fatty cuts of meat. So if you have like a fattier steak, we want to, it's okay to have, but we want to limit it throughout the week. And then pastries like pie, cake, donuts, those things, again, are totally fine to eat, but we want to limit those options. We don't necessarily want to have those things every single day. Also because those high sugary, um, high saturated trans fat options inhibit optimal performance. So you're not, might, you might not feel as great after eating those things. And so then you might not perform as well on and on, or on the field or off the field, maybe in school too. All right, so we've covered our macronutrients which were carbs, fat, and protein. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about micronutrients. So mentioned this already, but micronutrients are your vitamins and minerals found in food. These are really important to have because they're essential for the body to develop and function optimally. So some, some things listed here that are important. Um, micronutrients aid, aid in immune function, which is really important right now, staying healthy through the flu and making sure you don't get coronavirus, um, bone growth, they help in energy, brain function, serotonin production. So that's that, that helps you make, or helps make you feel happy, especially in these winter months. Uh, micronutrients help with recovery. So when you're sore after working out, how quickly you recover, uh, micronutrients can help in that. Hydration, uh, um, so micronutrients provide electrolytes and then performance and many other things. So basically, if you really wanted to, you could eat your food and you could have no vegetables or plant-based products, but you probably won't feel as great or perform as well as you would if you were to have fruits and vegetables, whole grains, all these things that contain micronutrients in them. <clears throat> all right, so I kind of mentioned this term called plant-based. So what are the benefits to plant-based? Uh, diets. Plant-based just means you have enough whole grains, beans, lentils, vegetables, fruits, anything that's grown from earth, from the ground or on a tree or on a plant that you can eat is considered like a plant food. You can still have animal products, but the bulk of your food is coming from plant-based sources. So benefits to that is Plant-based foods are primarily where our micronutrients are found. So some healthy carb sources that contain a lot of micronutrients are gonna be your whole grains, your beans, your lentils, vegetables, fruit, um, some fat sources. This should all hopefully be repetitive for you guys, but nuts, seeds, avocados, olives, olive oil, avocado oil, protein sources, um, plant-based protein sources are gonna be quinoa, beans, lentils, whole grains, again, vegetables. There's surprisingly some protein and vegetables. So eat those um, nuts and seeds. And then just to reiterate, we wanna eat the rainbow. So get a variety in your diet, make it fun, try new things, cause you're gonna get um, a variety of vitamins and minerals in those different colors. So let's, now we, we kind of talked about the basics of food, but now let's talk about like how to put those foods together in order to optimize your performance. So we're gonna talk a little bit about daily nutrition planning. The biggest tip of uh, piece of advice I wanna give you guys is to not skip meals. 
So if you skip a meal, that's less energy you have coming into your body that you can use on the field or in school or whatever you're doing. So we don't wanna skip meals. Depending on who you are and what your needs are, your meal number per day might be different than someone else, but maybe it could be like three meals plus snacks or maybe have four, even five meals. It's totally dependent on you. But if you skip a meal, that can cause brain fog. So maybe you're not thinking as clearly, you're kind of like, I mean, feeling foggy in the brain. Decreased sports performance with a lack of energy and mental clarity. You might not be able to make decisions as, e or as quickly as you would on the field as you um, would if you had eaten. You'll probably have decreased recovery, increased risk for injury, which we don't want because it's never good. And then you probably will feel tired. Another tip is to make sure you hydrate. So <clears throat> a general water goal for everyone is to try to consume half your body weight in ounces. Again, that's just general. That doesn't take that doesn't really take into consideration into consideration a lot of activity. Um, hundred ounces can be another good goal. And then I like to recommend adding in electrolytes if you're going to be exercising for longer than an hour, plus after you've exercised. So if you don't um, consume electrolytes during your practice or during your game make sure that you do consume electrolytes after your game because those electrolytes just help you rehydrate and then hold on to that hydration um, versus just peeing out that water that you drink. So some great examples of electrolytes could be Gatorade. Maybe that's something you drink during your game or practice. I don't know if you guys have heard of noon tablets. There's kind of a lot of stuff out there. Um, salt is actually an electrolyte. So salt your foods. Um, coconut water, bananas have electrolytes in them, dates, um, it's not listed here, but chocolate milk actually has some electrolytes in there. So if you have a glass of chocolate milk after you, your game or practice, that would be a good way to rehydrate. Uh, let, we're going to talk a little bit more about meals now and what good meals could look like for you. So some breakfast ideas, maybe you make a protein smoothie. So you buy a protein powder, you put two scoops of that in to your smoothie. You could even, if you don't wanna buy protein powder, you could do uh, Greek yogurt if you can tolerate dairy, because Greek yogurt has some great protein in there and then that would be a good substitute. A uh, cup of fruit, half cup of oats, handful of spinach to get some vegetables in there. You could use regular or almond milk to thicken it up. Um, I've even had people put like peanut butter or avocados in their smoothies, which is good. You can make a yogurt parfait. So using that Greek yogurt again for your protein source, add some granola or fruit to get your carbs. You have some eggs with toast, put some avocado or some nut butter on your toast and pair it with a piece of fruit. Oatmeal um, is great. Put some fruit and cinnamon or honey on that oatmeal instead of buying like the brown sugar packets or the apple cinnamon. I think there's a lot of flavors out there, but those can contain a lot of sugar. So by buying plain oatmeal, you can um, control your sugar intake a little bit better. You can even put a scoop of protein powder in your oatmeal to make it uh, have more protein or just simply adding some peanut butter or any kind of nut butter. Bagel with, uh, with eggs, cheese, and fruit on the side would be good too. Lots of varieties. All right, then lunch and dinner, you could do simply like four ounces of chicken, fish, steak, pork, pair that with some uh, carbohydrates and vegetables. Maybe you have potatoes on the side or and some steamed broccoli or a side salad. There's a lot of combinations you could do. Maybe put some rice on there, put some avocado. I don't know why people are able to draw on the slide. Oh. Um, you could do a salad. If you guys have a salad for lunch and dinner, I do recommend that you add a carbohydrate source. So things like being, you guys, please be respectful and stop drawing on the screen. I appreciate it. Um, and I don't know how to delete that, so I'm sorry. But oh God. if you have a salad to make sure that you're getting adequate fuel in that salad, add some beans, add some rice, uh, you can even put fruit in there, put some avocado, some toasted nuts, um, put it, whatever dressing of choice you would like on there as well, just to make sure you're filling it up with good energy. 
Uh, you could have pasta with a protein source, so like chicken, shrimp, and then a salad on the side. <clears throat> or maybe you have a sandwich with some turkey and ham slices, some cheese, tomatoes, lettuce for your veggies, put some um, fruit and veggies on the side for that as well. So again, a lot of options, but I wanted to give you guys some specific um, ideas in case you wanted to use those. For snacks then, some great options are, especially if you're like packing them in your bag to go quickly, you could do a piece of fruit plus some like little, they sell little packets of nut butter. So maybe you bring an apple or a banana and then you buy a little packet of peanut butter that you could put on your fruit or you just get some handful, like a handful of nuts, put those in a little Ziploc bag, pair it with a piece of fruit to get more of like a well, well-rounded snack. So again, with snacks, we wanna make sure that we get ideally a little bit of protein. So you'd get some protein from the nuts and then some carbs from the fruit. You do one to two slices of whole grain toast with avocado or nut butter. A protein shake could be an awesome snack. Uh, Greek yogurt, again, you could do that for a snack instead of breakfast. You could do protein bars. Some examples I like, some brands are Go Macro and then Garden of Life has a good like plant-based protein bar. Some um, other granola bars that are not as high in protein though, but good carbohydrate sources would be Cliff Bars, Nature Valley are good examples. Or you could do some jerky, turkey or beef jerky with a piece of fruit. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich is great, again, because you're getting carbohydrates from the bread and then some plant-based protein and fat from the peanut butter. So again, just some specific examples for you. But now let's talk about how or when should we consume this food? So depending on the person, do what energizes you the most. So some people, do really well with a lot of food before they exercise or practice or have a competition or game. Some people do better with a little bit less. However, make sure that you do not practice or go to a game without food in your stomach because we need that food for energy. We don't want you to um, go to the go. game having not eaten anything. Again, please, you guys just, we're almost done with this. Uh, Try not to draw on the PowerPoint, be respectful. Thank you. So three to four hours before practice or game, it'd be great to have, this is when you could have a full meal. So you get your carbs, your protein, your fats. Maybe you sit down with your family and have like a full dinner or you're eating lunch or breakfast before a game, as long as it's like three to four hours before uh, your game or practice. Then if we're looking at like one to two hours before a game or practice, that's when we would want to limit the food to just carbs and protein. So typically the, I see um, a lot of people have issues with high fiber and high fat foods where you could get some stomach upset and a little like digestive issues. So that's why we would want to limit those closer to your game or practice because you don't wanna be running around with an upset stomach, that's not ideal. So some food choices that would just have those carbs and protein in there would be like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, some like yogurt sticks uh, that you could quickly pack or like fruit or a protein smoothie would be good. And then if we're looking even closer to our gamer practice, like 30 to 60 minutes before, that's when we would just really wanna have carbs because again, that protein sometimes for some people, if you have too much, can sit a little heavy in the stomach and we really, really, really wanna avoid that, especially getting close to your gamer practice. So some ca simple carb examples would be like your granola bar, some applesauce packets, some raisins, dates, banana, pretzels even, or like dried fruit would be really easy pack in your bag and go options. And then, so that was pre-workout, let's talk about post-workout. What do we wanna to do to optimize refueling our body and start that recovery process? You are gonna to wanna to have protein and carbs and then some electrolytes, which I didn't list, but you wanna have electrolytes. So, or right there, yeah. All these uh, foods should be paired with water or like a sports drink afterwards to rehydrate. So some protein carb options, again, protein, or protein powder mixed with fruit, or you can make it into a smoothie, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, beef jerky with some fruit, um, a sandwich that 
has some protein and then the bread would be your carbs. Chocolate milk is a good like post-workout refuel energy source because you're getting protein from the dairy. You're getting sugar, which is good, which is basically carbohydrates. And then you're getting electrolytes in there to help with your rehydration. So I believe that is it now. I'd like to open up the floor if you guys have any questions. You can either put it in the chat or unmute yourself and we can do more discussion style and open to either way. Wait, how much milk would you put in the protein powder? I meant in the protein shake. In like a protein shake, you could put like as much as you want for the consistency that you want. So the more milk you're gonna add, the kind of like more watery it's gonna be in a sense versus maybe the less you put in, the more the thicker it'll be. Kind of like okay, thanks. more sweet, yeah. That was a great uh, question. Yes. What types of like what types of fruits are the best for like just all around? Yep, any fruit really is going to be good. Whatever you like, honestly. Let's see. Are there is there a major difference between male and female athletes and nutrition needs? Yes, that's an awesome question too. So there are differences. Usually, male athletes are going to need more and more food when they're just that because they have higher caloric needs. Otherwise, sort of the structure of everything is similar at your level. Is there like any other specific questions around that male, female difference that you had in mind? Well, Dr. What was that? So many people left. That's okay. Uh, if, you, if you don't have a okay, question, please green. either mute yourself or put it in did, uh, did your wife? Any other questions, you guys? I appreciate you jumping on and listening. We'll try to get, we can try to send that PowerPoint out to get those like meal examples out to you. Uh, someone has a question, is 13 too young to consume protein powder? I would say uh, you definitely do not need protein powder at any age. You can get all the protein you need from the foods that you eat. If you're noticing that you're struggling to get enough protein powder or you're feeling like your recovery is a little delayed, you're noticing that you're sore for three or four days after you practice, you could try adding in a protein powder. It's definitely not too young to try a protein powder, but keep in mind too, protein powders can be expensive. So you can try other things first. Um, which milk alternative do you recommend? So let's see, for what would you, what's the question? What do you mean with that? There's a lot of milk alternatives. There's like almond milk, there's cashew milk, uh, there's oat milk, which is really good. Honestly, all those would be great additives, whether you're putting it in cereal, smoothie, I've tried all of them. <laughs> They're great. I think oat milk is a little more creamy, which is kind of nice. So, and it has a little bit better flavor than an almond milk or a cashew milk. So you could try that would be good. If you have a dairy intolerance, there's even, oh, like coconut milk you could do. Like there's coconut milk yogurts that are good. There's even cashew milk yogurts, a lot of stuff. Does that, hopefully that helps answer your question. What's a good amount of protein in grams pre-workout? So we wanna like try to space our protein out evenly throughout the day. I would say like kind of at your guys's, well, age 15 to 20 grams, you could maybe go up to 30, but kind of the more protein you're going to have, it's going to be, it's going to take longer to digest. So we don't want to have too much. So 15 to 20 grams. Usually if like you, if you're thinking about protein powders, usually those like a single scoop would be plenty.
Anything else? Awesome questions, you guys. Thanks for sending these in. If you don't, feel free to leave. Do we have like um, different teams on here? You guys all through Blackhawks? Or what like age range do we have? We all we all play for Blackhawks. I don't know what like the average age is. I guess I mean I'm 13. I don't know about everybody else. Nice. Love it. Do you guys like did was this some of this information? Hopefully, like you've heard it before. I know I did a talk last year with some of you. I don't know if all of you guys were there, but hopefully learning something. Does anyone want to chime in on like what uh something new that you learned through the chat today? or something you were surprised about. Otherwise, if we don't have any other questions, we can wrap up. 10 and up, it looks like. Cool. Well, I can certainly stay on for a little bit longer, um, if, but if you guys don't have questions, we can be done. Thank you guys for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys.